Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Sergio Loral Rojas, and this work uh, was co-authored with uh, my lab mates, Josep Pelaera, Marcelo de Castro Fernandez, and supervised by Dr. Tetiana Bogodoreva and Dr. Luigi Vanfredi. Um, and well, the title, it's a little bit long to read it again. So let's jump right away into the contents of this work. So first of all, I would like to briefly describe an introduction and motivation of why this work is relevant in the context of phase or time domain simulation. And then uh, I will briefly describe uh, what the problem that we are trying to solve is um, and uh, how did we solve it. So basically, the data structure that we employ to um, handle power flow variables with records. Uh, then we will see how this was, uh, this whole process was automated with Python, and we will see how this um, was validated and escalated uh, for large power system models. Finally, I'll conclude this presentation with, uh, stating some conclusions and some uh, directions of future work. So let's get started by some introduction and motivation. Uh, this work is founded on the Open IPSL library, which is an open source library of power system components written entirely in the Modelica language. The scope of this library is for simulation of phasor time um, of phasor time domain systems, and it has been widely applied in a variety of domains, as you can see in these slides, ranging from multi-domain simulation, parameter estimation stability analysis, uh, control, and data generation for machine learning applications. So what you, if you are not familiar with the library, then this is how it looks like um, in Modelic. Um, so far, the main problem of the library has been the absence of a way to link the dynamic simulations that we model through the uh, Modelica language, through the equations, uh, to the static computations that are usually um, uh, applied in power system for planning and other issues. So uh, the most important static computation that uh, we are concerned about is uh, our power flows. So power, a power flow basically is a, represents uh, an equilibrium of the dynamical system, but in this context, in the context, in the context of dynamic simulation, it also um, gives the information of the initial guess of the algebraic variables. So this is important for many reasons, many of which were uh, already mentioned in the other presentations. But um, so far, uh, what we have, what we could have seen in the use cases of the um, of of, uh, of the Open IPSL library was that the users uh, had to implement their own ways to deal with power flow data. So the main contribution of this work is an, is an attempt uh, to unify uh, the, the work with power flow uh, variables through a Modelica record structure. And uh, to do so, we provided a Python pipeline to construct the power flow uh, record structure and to write the results uh, automatically. So uh, having stated that, it is now important to first of all, give an idea of what the power flow problem is, at least at a high level, and then uh, how do we solve this problem. So the power flow um, comes from, it's, it's an idealization basically, uh, in which uh, we uh, see a power grid as a perfectly balanced system. Uh, so instead of working with many phases, we work just with a single phase equivalent. And we also assume that the grid is operating at a constant frequency, either 50 or 60 hertz. And uh, based on these two assumptions, we work with a simplified network model in which we try to compute um, um, the, the, the subject is to compute the voltages at all the points in the system, knowing uh, what some variables are. So ideally, um, uh, we, if we know the current injections at the generation points and the current that are the, and the currents that are drawn by the loads, we could relate these variables by this equation here that is a nodal equation. This equation is linear, so it would be straightforward to compute uh, V given I, but that is not the case in an electric grid because the known quantities or the measurements differ from bus to bus. So depending on the bus type, we would have different uh, measurements and unknowns, as we can see here in this table. So for example, if in a load bus, we normally know the power consumption measured in active power and reactive power, but we don't know the voltage of that bus. 
So if we, uh, knowing B, we try to compute uh, knowing P, sorry, we try to compute V, the voltage magnitude, well, we would have to uh, solve this equation here and we would end up with a nonlinear equation. So basically, the power flow problem from the mathematical point of view, it's a nonlinear um, set of complex valued equations uh, and a closed form solution for this uh, problem here is almost impossible to achieve. So conventionally, this is solved by an iterative method, the newton raphson being the most popular one. And um, this based or the, the newton raphson algorithm is used as a base to construct what is known as a power flow solver. So we can say that a power flow solver is a combination of two things. First of all, the algorithm that we are trying to implement to solve iteratively this set of nonlinear equations combined with power system heuristics that basically are some uh, tricks, if we quote tricks, that are applied to solve the power flow problem more efficiently. Um, the, in, currently, we have a variety of power flow solvers uh, in, in commercial or open source tools. So we didn't want to reinvent the wheel, but we wanted to make sure that um, the powerful server that we were using uh, was in line with the philosophy of the open IPSL library. So, of course, we went for an open source option. Um, and our choice was grid call. So this is a Python based power system library. And uh, basically for the scope of our um, solution, it is the, the way in which we are solving the power flow. So there are many reasons why we selected grid call uh, besides the open source nature of it. but um, the most practical one is that it's fully compatible with PSSC, that is, uh, as of now, the main benchmark tool for our library. So uh, after this brief des description, um, uh, let's see how we design the PowerFlow record structure. Um, so basically, in a PowerFlow result, we have a lot of variables. And the way in which we uh, wanted to handle them was through a single attribute of the Modelica model. And that attribute is itself a record. So this is more or less how the class PowerFlow looks like. So a, in, in a nutshell, the PowerFlow, it's conceived as a replaceable record, which has four records as, as attributes, one record for the bus data, another one for the loads data, another one for the machines, and the last one for the transformer results. And the main idea is that as we, if we want to change the power flow condition of the model, we just have to change this power, uh, replaceable record here. Um, so he, uh, this is a better illustration of how it looks like in Modelica. So basically, if the user has a bunch of different power flow results um, and it wants to, and, and the user wants to replace the power flow value, it just has to uh, change one variable as shown here and that attribute will automatically update all the different uh, parameters associate, associated with the power flow and as you can see for a small model like this one that is the single machine infinite bus it's a really small uh, system we could have a lot of uh, power flow variables so this is uh, actually uh, really efficient from the user point of view um, now, um, I would like to briefly discuss how we automated this process with Python. Um, so we have thought of this, uh, of, of the problem of a user with an existing open IPSL model who wanted to add a data structure to their, uh, their system. So the, we implemented one function that is called create PF records, which basically takes the datamo file uh, containing the Modelica code of the model and creates automatically the PowerFlow data record structure. Then uh, we had another, we have another problem. So as I said before, uh, if we are we are using grid call to generate the power flow result. Uh, so if if we have uh, that power flow result and a representation of the system in in grid call uh, using this function here, grid call to rec, we we are using this function uh, we are able to write the power flow data result. So um, one small uh, thing that I would like to highlight here is that uh, we have also developed a tool called Babel Grid, uh, which enables to parse PSSC models directly 
um, to open IPSL. So that tool has this uh, record structure that I has uh, shown before uh, automatically embedded. So the use for if if a new uh, or if a user wants to develop a new model and, and the user has the PSC files, then this first part uh, could be uh, waived. It's not it's not required. But if the if the model already exists then this first script becomes handy. Then um, the last part is related to validation and scalability. So uh, we wanted to see if our approach uh, could work for systems of different scale. And uh, what we did was to select several of the use cases that we have in the library uh, with different number of buses and different number of state variables. So the number of buses is directly associated with the size of the power flow problem. And the number of state variables uh, re describes the complexity of the dynamic simulation problem. So normally, uh, power system in power systems, they only think of uh, the number of buses. Uh, but if you uh, deal with dynamic simulation, then the number of state variables is uh, more uh, uh, adequate metric of how complex the simulation is. So here you see that. Um, the for the record creation time um in so this this system here the nordic 44 that uh, as of the time of developing this paper was the largest system that we had on the open apsl library so you see that creating the record structure takes uh, just a few milliseconds and the power flow computation also scales up uh, according so uh, creating the records and um, comp computing the power flow, it, that, that's a problem that scales up really well. And, um, yeah, we just wanted to validate it. And of course, uh, here, uh, as you may see, um, basically as the larger the system is, the more time it takes to, uh, for both the records to create and the power flow solutions to, um, to be com com computed. But, um, that's usually the case, uh, in, in power systems. So. Uh, I must underline here that we didn't use all the um, uh, optimization routines available in GridCal. We just went with the default settings, but um, of course that we just wanted to to see how this scaled up. And uh, just to wrap up now, uh, our conclusions on future work. For, so uh, the main contribution of this work is the introduction of a record structure uh, by which the user can change all the power flow variables just by modifying one attribute uh, of a model and um, to enable the, the use of this record structure we provided two scripts one uh, to write the power flow results that we generated with grid call and another one to if, if a user has uh, an existing open IPSL model then uh, this script automatically creates and links the, uh, the record structure to the model uh, future work is related to expanding um, the, um, the, the tools that we can use to generate the power flow result. So we are currently working on integrating um, a, on integrating on Julia power system library to our pipeline. And also we would like to see if it is possible to uh, work with other by, uh, open source tools in by Python, for example, Panda Power and uh, in MATLAB. Uh, the, the math power library is openly is, is widely used for um, steady state computations. So um, as a final remark, uh, this we developed a tutorial um, that accompanies the, the GitHub code of uh, of this paper. So we encourage you to check it. And also, if you're not familiar with the library, that this tutorial is an excellent starting point to get familiar with it. So that's it. Um, thank you so much for, for your time and I look forward to answering any question you may have.